Howdy folks, Tex Scrabner here with Tex Scrabner Outdoors. New videos every Saturday, so if you don't want to miss out on your Tex Scrabner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness, make sure to click subscribe and check my channel every Saturday for new videos. I love reading your comments and I really do appreciate all of you that watch. This is my 375 H&H Magnum. Now I will be forthright and honest with you. I have in fact made videos on safari rifles in the past. But, honestly, I've never been on safari myself, so quite frankly, I don't really have a whole bunch of credibility on the subject. But you know who does? Peter Hathaway Capstick. Yeah, I kind of thought it would be a good idea to explain uh, why I look so ridiculous. Uh, there's a good reason for the way I'm dressed and uh, every item of... Uh, equipment and every item of uh, clothing that I have on. Now, if you want to look at my feet, uh, they're pretty torn up. Uh, but the important thing is, if you wear a hard shoe uh, without a gum sole or a good traction sole, you're going to make too much noise in the bush when you're stalking lion, a buffalo, or practically anything else. So don't come out with cowboy boots. I don't wear socks. I don't think any professional hunter I know uh, actually wears socks. And there's a very good reason, because most of the grasses indigenous to uh, the African hunting areas uh, have a seed which has a sharp point which will penetrate a sock and that'll hold it in place. It'll get stuck in your skin and it will uh, it'll either fester or infect uh, in one way or another. So I'd rather take the scratches and that sort of thing. Now I'm wearing shorts uh, for the simple reason that they make a lot less noise in the bush. So I'd rather take the cuts and scratches and that sort of thing. And the reason my legs are so cut up, and uh, they're not actually too bad this trip, but uh, is the fact that I'm looking up like this as I go through the bush. And I'm not looking exactly where I step. So I'm kind of taking my chances, and I'd rather have the scratches because they're minor. This is a standard bush jacket. This particular jacket is, um, let's see, 16, 17 years old. So they wear quite well. The object of this type of ammunition holder um, is the fact that, uh, number one, it doesn't get hung up on, uh, on bush, which could cost you your life with dangerous game out here, let's face it. And that's what uh, hunting dangerous game is all about. Uh, but you can get a round out of there or two and into your rifle. I load left-handed. Some people wear them on the right. Um, in quite a, quite a big hurry. And uh, believe me, when there's something breathing down your neck, <laughs> the hurry becomes even uh, more <laughs> accomplished. But um, it's a very practical setup. It carries 10 rounds. Uh, I usually have a couple more stuck in various pockets just in case. The knife is really more for effect than, than anything else, but it comes in very handy because there are probably a dozen times a day uh, that you have some use for it. <laughs> but essentially, that is why I draw flies and look so funny. What do you think about calibers? <clears throat> what would you recommend for a client coming in? The average person doesn't use a 458 um, that well because he's not accustomed to recoil. He's afraid of it. Yeah. I don't like a multiplicity of calibers, so I like a man to bring one rifle. Yes. I like him to bring a 375. And sure that's your <laughs> may, may you go to heaven. But of course, really the rifle a man wants to bring, his light rifle, yeah. should be the rifle that he uses frequently, that he he's shoots familiar well. with. And he, you know, if it's a 30 odd six. A lot of controversy, of course, goes into the choice of rifles, how to use them choice of calibers. Uh, this is a rather unusual weapon I have designed for my own personal uh, consumption, so to speak. It's a 375 Holland Holland Magnum, custom made with a tip-off scope, which permits me to use the open sights, of which there are two. And it's got a pop-up night bead, so-called, which is for dim light. And it has a bush protect protector. Uh, which covers it. 
And uh, a lot of people are highly individualistic in how they how they carry a rifle. Now this rifle is empty. Uh, I've made very sure of that. Uh, I normally, if I'm in the open, completely in the open, I put my left hand on the buttstock and uh, sort of distribute the weight across my shoulders. Um, but if things get hairy and thick, that's the way you take it off, then you're in business. If things get hairy and thick, but you're not really sure and you've got a long way to go, this is a very good position. The natural weight of your hand pushes the rifle free from your body. And it's very fast uh, because the rifle's already in front of you. So you can be on just like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you want to see the complete film, you're going to have to buy Sportsman on Film Cap 6 Botswana Safari, where it's loaded with tips and tricks from one of the most legendary and prolific professional hunters that ever lived. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode of Texas Grab Your Outdoors. As always, God bless all my sportsmen of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. This is my friends over at SOETacticalGear.com. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement and those of you serving in the military. Thanks for watching Texas Grab Your Outdoors.